Clostridia. It has got following four species. The first one is Clostridium perfringens. I've got a detailed video on that one. Be sure to check it out. The next three are Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. I said I welcome everybody. So today we'll be talking about Clostridium tetani. In some places, it is also pronounced as Clostridium tetani. You should choose the one you like. I'll go with tetani. But before getting into the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comment section. So, let's jump straight into the video. Before having a deep look on Clostridium tetani, let me give you a quick overview of bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes on the basis of acid fasting into acid fast bacterium and there is an exception that's the mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria are also classified on the basis of gram staining into gram negative and gram positive. Gram negative bacteria and positive both are further classified into cocci and rod and these are further classified based on certain factors. We're not concerned here with gram negative as Clostridium tetani is gram positive. So let's talk about gram positive. The gram positive rods are further classified into non spore forming and spore forming rods. The non spore forming rods are subdivided into filamentous and non filamentous, while the spore forming rods are further subdivided into aerobic, for example, bacillus, and anaerobic for example, Clostridium. The aerobic and anaerobic spore-forming rods are further classified into motile and non-motile rods. The motile aerobic rod is Bacillus cereus and the non-motile aerobic rod is Bacillus anthracis. I've got detailed videos on both of them, be sure to check them out. And non-motile anaerobic rod is the Clostridium perfringens and the motile anaerobic rods are Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum and Clostridium difficile. Clostridium tetani. It is a gram-positive rod. It is an obligate anaerobe. It means that it cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. Oxygen is kind of toxic to it. Clostridium tetani is responsible for causing the disease tetanus with its famous symptom, the locked jaw. Rusty nail is the cause. You might be thinking, how? I'll explain that in the habitat or transmission section. This bacterium is responsible for forming spores. It forms spores in conditions which are unfavorable to the bacteria. Like the bacteria cannot survive in the environment that has got plenty of oxygen. So this bacteria will form spores in that environment and will exist as spores. This bacterium is motile. It is responsible for producing certain toxins like tetanospasmin, tetanolysin, and it belongs to the family of Clostridia. In this picture, you can visualize the Clostridium tetani. This one, um, this is also the Clostridium tetani, but it's different shape. I'm going to explain that why it has got this kind of different shape in a moment. And then these spores. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction and classification. Now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. Shape. Clostridium tetani is normally rod-shaped, but when it sees that this environment is not suitable for me, it gets converted into spores. And spores are kind of circular or spherical in shape, just like them. But the stage between the rod-shaped bacterium and the spores is this, the tennis racket or drumstick shaped bacterium, just like that one. This is the bacterium having a terminal spore in it and this one is enlarged bacterium. Clostridium tetani is 2.5 micrometers long. It is blue or purple in color. The reason behind is that this bacterium is gram positive and the gram positive bacteria always retain the dye in their thick polypeptide layer. These are the three forms of Clostridium tetani, the one without spore. This is the rod shaped bacteria. This one with spore. It has a spore in it and that is termed as the terminal spore. It has got this rod shaped body and this whole structure is like a tennis racket or drumstick. Last one is spores. It is formed in unfavorable conditions. It has got certain layers, coat being the top one, then we've got cortex, third one is germ cell wall, and the inner one is the core. This is not the hard and fast rule that these layers are gray, blue, or yellow in color. I've just 
put them to depict the different layers. Structure. As this bacterium has got thick peptidoglycan layer in its cell wall, this is a gram-positive bacterium. It is non-encapsulated, which means that it has no capsule. This bacterium is motile, it is responsible for forming spores, and it releases certain toxins, and these toxins play an important role in the pathogenesis of tetanus. This one is an illustration, but this one is the actual picture. Under the microscope, the Clostridium tetani is purple in color, it is rod shaped. This one is the drumstick or tennis racket shaped bacteria, one is converting into spore, and these spores are showing opacities. Whenever you see certain circular opacities under microscope, they will always refer to spores. Habitate, hosts. Clostridium tetani colonizes the human gut, but it can also be found in the intestine or DGI tract of some animals. Sources, spores are widespread in soil, but they can also be found in dust and animal dung. Transmission, the portal of entry is usually the wound site. For example, where a nail penetrates the foot. Okay, let me explain that to you. In introduction, I said that rusty nail is the cause. Rusty nail placed on the floor might have dust on it, might have got rust on it. And when a human walking barefoot steps onto it, it will get into the human foot. It will cause the spores in the dust to get into the human body because there's a wound caused by the nail. And these spores that will get into the human body, they will germinate into bacteria. Bacteria will release toxins and toxins will cause tetanus. Spores can also be introduced during skin popping. Skin popping is a technique used by drug addicts to inject drugs into their skin. And there are certain other conditions that favor the transmission. When we talk about neonatal tetanus, it is caused by contaminated umbilicus or during the circumcision. One really high yield thing is that puncture wounds promote the growth of Clostridium tetani. Pathogenesis. After entering into the human body, what will happen? Spores will germinate into bacteria. The germination of spores is favored by necrotic tissue and poor blood supply in the wound area. What happens when the spores germinated into bacteria and bacteria is now present in human body? This bacterium will release, the Clostridium tetani will release tetanus toxin. We're going to talk about these toxin in a moment, but let's now stick to the process how it causes the infection. This polypeptide toxin is carried intraexonally and these toxins will travel via blood to peripheral nerve, nerve terminals all the way to central nervous system and they will cause what? Tetanus. Tetanus is not limited to just adults, it can be caused in neonates and the neonatal tetanus is really dangerous because the mortality rate of neonatal tetanus is far higher than the adult tetanus. I'm not saying that adult tetanus is not causing the mortalities but the rate of neonatal tetanus is higher than that. Virulence factors, there are two major toxins that play a really important role in causes the tetanus. The first one and that is really high yield, that is tetanospasmin. It is a protease, that's the polypeptide, that binds to the peripheral nervous system and travels retrograde, that means backward, to ventral cells in the central nervous system. There's a snare protein that is synaptobrevin. It does what? It produces GABA and glycine. GABA, the gamma aminobutyric acid. These are the inhibitory neurotransmitters. These are produced at spinal synapses. They do what? They inhibit the alpha motor neuron. So there will be alpha motor neuron inhibition. When there is tetanospasmin in human body, what will it do? It will cleave that protein. And all this process will not occur. There will be uninhibited excitation. That will cause spasms, the trismus of lockjaw, the opisthotonus, that is the hyperextended head or lower limbs. And it will also cause rigidity. That is rhesus sardonicus. And these three are what? These are the symptoms of tetanus. This is how the tetanospasmin causes tetanus. The second one, tetanolysin. It is a cytolysin that is oxygen labile hemolysin. It binds to cholesterol and is hemolytic and cardiotoxic. By now we know that Clostridium tetani is responsible for causing what? Tetanus. Clinical findings. Tetanus is characterized by strong muscle spasms, the spastic paralysis, tetany. 
Specific clinical features include locked jaw trismus due to rigid contractions of jaw muscles, which prevents the mouth from opening, a characteristic grimace known as rhesus sardonicus, and there are also exaggerated reflexes. Opisthotonus, a pronounced arcing of back due to spasm of strong extensive muscles of the back. Respiratory failure can also occur. You might be thinking how. Let me explain. There is a contraction of the muscles in the whole human body. Respiratory system also has some muscles in it and these are smooth muscles so they will also contract. When these muscles will be contracted there will be no breathing process taking in human body. So that can lead to respiratory failure which can ultimately cause death. That is the reason that the mortality rates associated with tetanus are high. The three things, the lockjaw trismus, the rhesus sardonicus, and the opisthotonus, they three are forming a tetanic triad. If someone asks you, what is a tetanus, can you explain us the symptoms of tetanus? Just go for tetanic triad and you're good to go. Lab diagnosis. We'll need the samples of tissue and exudate. There are no such tests performed for tetanus because tetanus itself is speaking that look at the patient, patient suffering from tetanus. But we'll go for gram staining that will reveal that bacteria is gram positive. On microscopy, we'll find out its shape, the tennis racket, the drumstick, the rod shape, or the spores that will figure out that this is the Clostridium tetani. This bacterium is 2.5 micrometers long. It is purple or blue in color because it's gram positive bacterium. This is how this bacterium looks under the microscope. These opacities are referring to the terminal spores, this drumstick or tennis racket is the bacterium that that's the enlarged bacterium. This is without spore. This one is with spore culture. As Clostridium tetani are extremely sensitive to oxygen being obligate anaerobes. So it becomes difficult for them to grow on cultures. But they grow as a thin film on the surface of agar and they do not grow as a normal colonies like other bacteria do. Treatment. First and foremost important thing is wound debridement. The tetanus immune globulin, the tetanus antitoxin, is used to neutralize the toxin. We can also use certain antibiotics like metronidazole, penicillin G. Benzodiazepines, for example diazepam, they can be given to prevent spasms. An adequate airway must be maintained and respiratory support must be given to the patient in order to avoid the death. Prevention. Tetanus is prevented by immunization with tetanus toxoid the formaldehyde-treated toxin in childhood and every 10 years thereafter because this immunization works for just 10 years. Tetanus toxoid is usually given to children in combination with diphtheria toxoid and the acellular pertussis vaccine. That's why it is termed as DPT vaccine. We can also go for passive immunization. Alright guys, let's wrap up today's video in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Clostridium tetani. It is responsible for causing tetanus, spores in soil and to the wound. This is how they transmit the infection. Hosts are humans and animals. Clostridium tetani can be found in soil, dust and animal dung. They are diagnosed based on gram staining, microscopy and rarely culture. Tetanus is treated with tetanus antitoxin, that is the tetanus immune globulin, and also with tetanus toxoid and certain antibiotics like metronidazole and penicillin G. We can also go for benzodiazepine. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter. And I'll catch you soon in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.